it used to be just in Silicon Valley. Now across the country, people will see uh, the Google car drive by and it's got the big thing at the top of the uh, vehicle and it's yeah. spinning around. Uh, and you don't know many times, is it like they're collecting data for Google Maps? Is it the self-driving car? If you're in tune with the differences, then maybe, okay, that's the self-driving car. And, the, and they're obviously driving with a human behind the driving, yeah. uh, behind the steering wheel to capture data. Like that is what that car is doing. Uh, and that was a pretty cool idea. I was like, let's put a bunch of cars on the road and capture that data. We'll have our employees behind it. And over time, hopefully we can get to the point where we could create self-driving cars. Makes sense. Tesla is like, well, why do we have to have Tesla cars? Why don't we just have everyone who drives a Tesla collect the data for us when they're just driving around the road? We'll just collect every single piece of data. Yeah. And so I don't know if that's one to a thousand, one to a million, you know, difference, but obviously Tesla is collecting way more data than Google or anybody else. But what you're saying is it's not just about collecting the data from the cars on the road. They're then taking that and then they're running additional simulations on top of it to even accelerate the learning faster? Yeah, that's right. And they started doing that recently. They okay. started doing that, I think, last year to this year. Okay. So they are running simulations right now. And Google has been running simulations for a long time. But I think it's a combination of both, right? When I, when I talked about OpenAI and the Rubik's Cube, um, they the hardest part was transforming, like getting the software and then getting that to the hardware, mm -hmm. right? And and I think both parts are really, really important. For Tesla, they have both parts. They have a million cars mm -hmm. running in the road, and they also have the simulation where they can see scenarios that, you know, they, they haven't experienced before, and they can actually experience that, you know, in a simulated environment. So they can train a thousand years in, you know, a few months. Mm -hmm. And when we think of this, how long will it take for Tesla to have fully self-driving cars where I can sit in the back seat, I don't need to be anywhere near the driver's seat, and it'll drive me around, and that will be not only possible, like it can actually get me there, but it will be safe, and that will become the norm, do you think? Yeah. Um, so we are in September of 2022. Um I think it's going to be either end of this year or next year. Uh, you think by the end of this year, potentially, in three or four months, we will have the ability for the car to navigate uh, the everyday driving for anyone who wants to sit in a Tesla? Exactly. Um, but th they are not going to allow people to do, okay. to do that. So the, the technical capability may be there, but the regulatory approvals or, or, or the uh, uh, approval to actually do this on the street won't happen. Exactly. And Elon Musk has been saying that for years, right? Mm -hmm. He has been saying, oh, we're going to have self-driving cars that are better than humans mm -hmm. by end of this year. And he has been saying that for five or six years. Mm -hmm. But the difference now is that they have these simulated environments that make the car know how to drive in all these different scenarios, and right? is the simulations trying to uh, get reps because the computer needs to see the situation over and over and over and over again? Uh, or is it if the computer sees a situation one time, it remembers it forever, and it's more so about the super, super long tail of a kid runs out in the uh, road, then a car backs into the road, then a bicycle goes into the road, and it just has to see every single situation. It's the latter. Okay. So it needs to see all different scenarios that it hasn't experienced before, mm -hmm. right? And it needs to know what to do. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't seen and maybe it can take some wrong decision, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to have all the simulated situation so we can know when that situation actually happens. Is Tesla in these simulations, like, are they making the wrong decision and like hitting in, you know, fake pedestrians or, or like crashing into fake cars? And, and like, that's part of the learning process is somebody then sits there and says like, no wrong decision. The car should have done this instead. And it's almost like this like human feedback loop that's correcting uh, the actual computer. Yeah. And they actually have that information also from the cars running in mm -hmm. the in the real world. If there's a, if there's accidents, obviously if they know, accidents, hey, it shouldn't have gone that way. Or uh, if someone like if the car is turning right and the person driving the car actually takes the wheel and drives somewhere else, mm -hmm. they can actually get that data and send back to Tesla. So they actually, when they are gathering that data, they don't send all the video feeds directly to Tesla. They send selected frames because 
else it would be a lot of data there. Got it. Gathering. So if you're just driving down the highway and Tesla car, the, all the uh, uh, cameras on it is collecting all of this data, if there's almost like no outlier situation, Tesla as a computer has seen a million times driving down the highway with other cars around it or whatever. It's when somebody grabs the wheel and jerks it one way or the other or slams on the brakes or or there's some sort of external or outlier type event. That's when maybe they say, hey, we want to see that. And that may be a situation that we haven't seen before. Exactly. And the interesting part of Tesla is that they have the biggest neural network running at scale in the world. Hey, you, did you like this video? Great. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and see you next time.